All right, welcome back to the Dr. Jimbo Love Show. I'm here again with Seth Matthews from Brothers Barbecue, or Brothers Bar and Bar Grill. grill. <laughs> I got that stuck in my head. I, I think I just love barbecue way too much. All right, let's talk a little bit about last week. We had some pretty interesting games last week. We had the Tampa Bay versus the Eagles. And uh, but Seth and I both picked Tampa Bay to beat them. Uh, Brady, again, had a great, great game. He was 34-32. Uh, Sorry, 34, 34, uh, 34 34 uh, attempts. I'm sorry. 32 complete. 34 completions. 34 completions out of 42 out of attempts. 42 attempts. And he had uh, nine. Uh, Antonio Brown had nine receptions. Um, let's talk a little bit about Miami versus Jacksonville. Of course, two teams that just basically really, really don't have very good records. Uh, Jacksonville got, got their first win. Urban Meyer, first win with Jacksonville. There you exactly. Go, exactly. And that was in London, of course. That was an early game. Indy versus Houston. We both had Indy. Um, Indy ended up playing pretty well. It was two one and four teams that uh, battled it out. Well, and they're a good team too. It's just they just haven't got the luck of the draw. They've been in every game they've been in. They're playing well this season. Yep, yep. Uh, then we worked down and we talked about San Diego versus the Ravens. I was completely wrong. I really... Uh, I backed Herbert for the first time all season. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm a believer. And then he goes out and gets destroyed an just by the an Baltimore egg. Ravens. Yep. Vikings versus Carolina. Again, Seth's Vikings did very well. Did you, was that an overtime game? Yeah, and we took number two in our division right now. Chicago sitting at three. So we're right behind Green Bay. Here we come. So, so the Vikings are back being, uh, you guys are what, three and three Three now? and three. Yep, and back, then back we have front. Green Bay sitting at, I believe, like four and one or five and one. Interesting. And are you guys playing them this, not this weekend? Are you? No, they're, we're off okay. this week. Okay, that's right. You guys are on a bye. Arizona, um, undefeated Arizona played against the Browns. Um, it looked to me like Arizona just completely handled the Browns. Uh, again, Baker Mayfield is out. Um, and uh, he was out when he played against the, the, the Broncos yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, two days ago. Actually. Well, and that team's beat up. Cleveland has a great roster, but they're missing some amazing players in Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubbs out. Jarvis Landry came back. He got banged up a little bit. Odell got banged up a little bit in the Broncos game. So, I mean, this team's hurting. They still got a shot. Uh, in that division but right now they're just dealing with a lot of injuries going on in that one right uh we had uh, the raiders versus the the Bron broncos and we we kind of were looking and watching to see if there was going to be any kind of hangover for john gruden and uh, the ravens came or the raiders came out and just played a very very good game and handed broncos their third straight loss uh steelers versus seahawks again we had a russell wilson list Seattle team with Gino. Uh, Gino, how did Gino do last week? He didn't do terrible. Uh, he's no Russell Wilson, but then again, you're running into a tough defense. You're having a guy that hasn't played in a couple years. I mean, his most significant time, I think it was for the New York Jets. So, I mean, he's been a long time out of this fast-paced game. He's a decent backup, but he just can't fill Russell Wilson. So it doesn't help that Chris Carson was also out. So they were on a backup running back as well. So just an overall, it's going to be a tough stretch for Seattle for a while. And we were on the Buffalo bandwagon big time, Seth and I both. And Buffalo ended up losing by three points to Tennessee. Travis Henry had an incredible ball game. Yeah, Derrick Henry really, or Derrick Henry, <laughs> Derrick Henry really kind of, he was the game changer in this one. I thought Buffalo's D might be able to hold him. That wasn't the case. He ran for three touchdowns, over 150 yards on 20 carries. So Derrick Henry really single-handedly brought Tennessee through this game. Hey, who's Travis Henry? Where was he? Was you're he in Alabama? Of, you're thinking of Travis Kelsey, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing about live radio, folks. All right, so we're going to move into this week's matchups. The first matchup we'd like to talk about is the Chiefs versus the Titans. The Chiefs are 3-3. Three and three. The Titans are 4-2. and two. Again, uh, Derrick Henry, big problem for Kansas City. Yeah, the big thing I have in this one is right now I believe uh, the Chiefs are favored. But I'm still taking Tennessee because... Derrick Henry just showed that he can carry this team against a tough Buffalo team. Kansas City has a weaker defense, but the big question mark is, does Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill figure this out, and are they back to their gunslinging, high-scoring touchdowns? Because if it turns into a shootout, Tennessee will not keep up. So it all comes down to can Tennessee control the game. Now, Tennessee does have a few uh, offensive weapons back. A.J. Brown was actually sick during that Buffalo game. He had food poisoning. He still played. 
Julio Jones, it was his, like one of his first games back coming off injury. So those guys are both healthy this week. So maybe Tennessee has a shot with these new wide receivers. I've yet to see them be a high throwing team. They pretty much run everything through Derrick Henry. He's a dying breed, but I think he's going to run this game through Kansas City. Yeah, I, I'm picking the Titans as well in this one. So Seth and I are on the same same page with this one. Uh, Bengals versus Ravens, a big AFC North matchup. Again, I, I'm hoping for a plane crash or a lightning storm because I'm a Steeler fan. Um, for me, both teams, I'd like to see both teams lose. But of course, that's not possible. <laughs> the big thing with this is for everybody that doesn't believe in the Bengals because they've been bad for so long, haven't watched them play lately. Exactly. Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, that connection is amazing. And they're in every single game. They took the Vikings to overtime and beat them. They took Green Bay to overtime and lost. But overall, this Cincinnati team is something I haven't seen in a long time come from this No, team. and they came into Pittsburgh and handled Pittsburgh just like Pittsburgh looked horrible. And that's not normal for Cincinnati to come into Heinz Field and do, and do that. The Ravens also have a little bit of an injury bug going on. How many people... Any key people that you've got marked down that you know well, that they're so missing? Well, their running backs are crazy with – they ha haven't had any all season. J.K. Dobbins injured right away. Then Latavius Murray is supposed to take her over. He started getting hurt. Then they had to bring in Le'Veon Bell. Then they brought in a couple other guys that really they don't have a backfield. But as much as they're banged up, they still only have one loss. And you know what? I'm on the Lamar Jackson train this week. I think it doesn't matter what Cincinnati has. Lamar Jackson's going to find a way to win. And, you know, when I watch Lamar Jackson play, it reminds me of watching Virginia Tech with Michael Vick back in the day. He was just such a head and shoulders above in quickness and how he can handle it. I mean, it's almost like he welcomes that first person to come back in the, into the backfield, and then he jukes him, and then it's off to the races, and we never know what's going to happen. Well, and his biggest criticism was that he can't throw the ball. Well, uh, he must have listened to everybody because start of this season – his throwing numbers are way above last year, and he's improved greatly. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, this brings us into the, the Colts versus the 49ers. Colts come in at 2-4. and four. The 49ers are 2-3. and three. Looks like Jimmy, Jimmy G is going to get the start because Lance is out. Um, watch for Debo Samuels. He's a ga Gamecock, and he's a deep, deep threat. What have you got on this game? So I'm going with the Colts. Uh, the Colts haven't had the best of luck lately, like I said earlier. But they've been in every game. Their defense is improving every week. Their offense is starting to figure out. Jonathan Taylor, a Wisconsin Badger, in his second year running, he is averaging almost 100 yards per game and at least a touchdown. So that run game's strong. Their defense is strong. Rodrigo, when they lost uh, to Baltimore, because Indianapolis had that game, mm -hmm. he was injured. So they lost because of special teams. But he's healthy now. So I believe that the Colts are finally going to make a statement because even though they have a terrible record, right. they still have, they say, they're putting them at a 25% chance of still winning this division. So you have the Colts then in this game. Is that what yep. you're going to go to? I'm, I'm, I'm picking the 49ers, so we'll, we'll have to check back next week and see how we're doing. How about the Bengals-Ravens? Who did you have in that game? The Bengals, I'll take Ravens. I, as much as I okay. love the new Bengals, I, I still think the Ravens, I think this is their year to make a huge run for the playoffs and possibly make some noise. Now, do I think it's championship with Buffalo and all those other teams? I'm not quite sure yet, right. but I think they're going to make some noise and make a deep run in the playoffs as long as Lamar is healthy. So in the first game, again, the Chiefs and the Titans, you were, you're, are you going with the Titans or the Chiefs? I'm going with the Titans. Okay, and I've got the Titans. So, so far, Seth and I are right on track. We, we, we agree with everything. Uh, the next game, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about the 2-4 and four Eagles versus the 4-2 and two Raiders. Will there be a continued Gruden hangover? There wasn't last week, but let's see what happens this week. You know, we're playing in Vegas. So, again, the, the advantage I see goes to the Ravens. What have you got? So, I think the Raiders are going to walk away with this one because the big thing is uh, Philly's not doing Jalen Hurts any favors. After last game when they lost to Tampa, they traded Zach Hurts, one of his offensive weapons. <laughs> Uh, they really don't have a good running game. Jalen Hurts' stats aren't bad. He's running for over 100 yards, basically. He's scoring the touchdowns himself. He's doing everything he can to win with no help. The Raiders are a more balanced team with Darren Waller at tight end. You have great wide receivers. You have Josh Jacobs as the running back. And people forget, even though Kenyon Drake hasn't done anything this year, he was a top 10 running back last year. Uh, before he came to the Raiders. Right. And there's some talk, too. I was listening a little scuttlebutt about maybe 
uh, Coach Peterson to become the Raiders' new head coach. If he can get some wins, that, that's more pressure. If these guys really like him and they're going to show out for him because they're going to want him to have that job. So I can really see the Raiders rallying behind this new coach, getting him some wins, playing harder uh, than, than they have in the past. So, so there won't be a hangover. There may be an improvement. Yeah, we'll have to just wait and see. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, the next one, of course, we have the 5-1 and one Bucks with Tom Brady versus the 3-3 three and three Bears. Again, I can't really see any downside. I, I think we see the Tampa Bay roll through pretty pretty easily here. What do you got? See, Chicago, as much as people say all oh, their offense isn't that bad, it's terrible. Uh, I'm not going to go with the East Penn analysts saying the Bears aren't that bad. No, they're, they're in shambles. Now, their defense is great. <laughs> I think they're going to cause Tom Brady some issues, and I think that Tom Brady's not going to be able to run up the score like he has in some games. But with that said, you have Leonard Fournette, you have Antonio Brown, you have Gronk, you have Chris Godwin. Yeah, uh, I don't know if Gronk's back yet, but, but you have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. So many weapons, and the defense isn't terrible in Tampa. And with how bad the Chicago offense is, I don't see them really making noise, and they're on a third, second, third string running back for Chicago. Oh, wow. uh, I can't even think of his name right now because Montgomery's out, and then his backup has gotten COVID, and so he can't make it back for this game. So they're going with third string running back against a uh, really solid Tampa Bay defense. So I think Tampa Bay just destroys. Okay, good, good, good. Well, but Seth and I are in agreement, agreement on that one. Um, our last one that we're going to fe feature um, is the Saints at three and two versus the Seahawks, which are two and four. Again, the, the Seahawks are without Russell Wilson, so Geno Smith will get the start. And the again. Saints are rested; they were on bye week last week. They were on bye week, so I, you know, I, I think I see the Saints winning this one pretty easily, even though it, it happens to be in Seattle. An interesting note is that Seattle is 0 and two at home for the first time in 20 seasons. So they're struggling. It doesn't matter where they're playing. They're struggling. And, not, and without their number one quarterback, I think they're going to continue to struggle. See, and I can see this being a close game. I, I give the edge to New Orleans. Uh, the, at the end of the day, Seattle has too many injuries. Uh, but the Saints aren't the same team that we're used to. The Saints have dominated with Drew Brees for so long. And now this is the first year with Jameis Winston. He hasn't played bad yet. Uh, he is the guy known for 30 for 30, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions in a season. Set the record. Uh, never seen it done before. Pretty interesting. But, I mean, you're running into Alex Collins running for him because Chris Carson's out. You still have DK Metcalf. You have some offensive weapons. Defense is no slouch, but I give the edge to New Orleans with Kamara and those guys. And Michael Thomas, he's not back yet, but he's on his way back. And you add that to that Saints team. I think they're going to win that division this year. Yeah, I do too. That's why I've got winning that division as well. Any other games that, that, that you can think of right off the top? And it's, it's a kind of a weird week. We have a bye week. But the uh, Vikings are on. Uh, are, have a bye. So do the Steelers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Broncos uh, in Cleveland have already played. Yep. So. And that was an interesting game. What, what, what were your impressions of Cleveland when they handled the Broncos? And again, the Broncos lost a fourth straight ball game. You know, when Cleveland won that game, it was interesting because the guy that actually made the biggest difference, I'll have to look up his name, but he's a third stringer. Uh, he, technically, I don't even think he was on the team because wow. he graduated from UCF, one of our smaller colleges, when they were really good. Nobody drafted him. He started sending resumes saying, like, hey, can I send you my game tape? Not even to the NFL, to the a, like the AFL. And so he was just trying to get on a team. Right. Uh, I don't know if you saw his post-conference interview, but – well, after he won the game, they said, hey, did you see LeBron tweeted you? He almost got in tears and was like, LeBron tweeted me? That's my favorite football player. Like, this is big time. So he's just happy to be there. And I, I think he's hungry. I think he's going to be there next week because Kareem Hunt seems to be out for a couple more weeks. Uh, Nick Chubb should be back next week. But you might see a new one-two punch in Cleveland. So I think they'll be just fine. Um, what, what, what are they saying about Mayfield? Is he going to be out again next week, or is that still kind so of So he the says air? he's going to play. Okay. Baker Mayfield's a warrior. He's, he's going to try broken, to do it. broken bone in his shoulder, I yep. believe. And he said, I'm going to play. Well, well, we'll be seeing what the coaches say. Case Keenum's no slouch. He's no Baker. Uh, but I think the big thing with that is if Baker can play and he can push through, um, 
All of his receivers seem to be back right now. He's just waiting to get his running backs back. Cleveland might be able to get back on track, but it might also take a week or two. Sure, sure. And Case Keenum, let's let's just uh, give you know some props to this guy. He's played for how many different teams? Ten. Yeah, I know he had a successful season in Minnesota, and then Broncos played big time, and he laid an egg when he came here. He is like the Gary Kubiak of this generation as far as backup quarterbacks go. But right now, Broncos are in a lot of trouble. Broncos are starting to ask to start doing some coaching changes. They're asking to do general manager changes oh, yeah. uh there's talks about trading teddy to miami for tua or to wow. houston for deshaun uh right now they're saying they're not trading him but if they don't turn this around they're in a winnable division yep. you have the raiders four and two who could drop it this week i, sure. I mean we both picked the raiders but if they drop that game you're looking at the raiders and chargers both with a couple losses, the Broncos aren't that far behind, no, so if they can no. right they, the ship. I mean, they started out 3-0, and and of course, people, uh, Seth's been in Denver now for, what, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. I've been here 25 years. And of course, you hear the Bronco fans start talking Super Bowl, even though they hadn't played anybody. Well, we're not hearing any more Super Bowl talk here in Denver. And again, we're talking, we got to remember that uh, uh, the Denver coach, Vic Bangino, is it Bangino? Uh, no, Vangio. Van Vangio. He's in his fourth season, and, you know, he really needs to win. And if he doesn't win, I think what we'll see is a lot of talk of coaching changes mm -hmm. and maybe some wholesale changes like Seth was talking about with the quarterback. I would love to see Tua come here. That'd be kind of fun, yeah. right? Well, and you're looking at uh, Jerry Judy should return here in the next mm -hmm. week or two. Uh, so you'll get a another offensive weapon. Uh, the biggest complaint uh, from the Broncos fans have been just – Lack of explosiveness on offense. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing right now is a bunch of short passes. Takes a long time for them to get down. And you're seeing big plays beat the Broncos. Right. Uh, that running back for Cleveland ran all over them. All of them. Uh, they, he, they couldn't stop him to save to save their lives. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, it's. It, I think we've brought the 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 real out the reality and the expectation more to check here in Denver. And I think people are actually seeing what they've got. Again, Drew Locke is not the answer. No, nope. Teddy Bridgewater, you know, let's see what happens. Maybe if there's some big big talk of, of Tua coming to town, that would be really neat. I well, think, and you're too. looking at, too, the Broncos, even if it's not Drew Locke, drafting a quarterback for them isn't working either. How many have they drafted no. so far? And they're all ducks. Uh, uh, and you got to talk, you know, you got to kind of look and see what is Elway thinking. Okay, mm -hmm. now Elway got lucky and, and, and won the, you know, the Peyton basically Manning the lottery. Yep. And will he get the, you know, the, the Rodgers sweepstakes? What's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers at the end of the season? There's lots of talk here in Denver that he may come here. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? And we'll you know what? I, I could go either way with this. Honestly, there's another quarterback that they're, they're not in talks yet. But I think the Broncos reach out to Vegas, even though Vegas probably won't give him up. But the backup, Marcus Mariota, he, he is ready to play, and he's going to be a stud if anyone gives him a shot. Yeah. And I think you can get him for cheap right now, build a team around him, and really have a game changer on the team. Uh, same with just Sean Watson. Tua, he's pretty young, and you'll get a lot of years out of him. I'm just not sure if he's ready to take over the helm on a rebuilding team. So we'll see how this plays out. Uh, we'll keep you updated with when it, it, if we hear any more. I mean, if the Broncos have one more loss, we'll be talking about all the changes they're doing. Absolutely. I think you'll see a lot of talk like that, too. And, and it'll be interesting to see what the local media has to say, D-Mac and the boys. Uh, again, we want to... We want to welcome you to come down to Brothers Bar and Grill here in the shops at Northfield. Seth is the general manager. Seth, tell a little bit about the comfort food on your menu and how, and how great it is. I had some tartar sauce yesterday. That All their sauces are homemade here. The tartar sauce was to die for. I took it home with me. I had an extra little bit, and I, and I wanted my wife to taste it, and it's just completely off the charts. Yeah, so I think the thing we're most known for, our wings are amazing. Uh, everybody gets wings here. All of our sauces are made from scratch. Uh, you don't get these little rinky-dink uh, wings that you get uh, at some other places. These are big wings that are amazing. And they're kind of breaded. Mm -hmm. They have that kind of, uh, they almost are a lot like the, the wings that you get at Hooters, except that they are a ton better. Yeah. A ton Better. And then if you're looking for appetizer, I mean, we're Wisconsin-based bar. Uh, so obviously we, we couldn't be Wisconsin without some good old-fashioned cheese curds. Uh, they are just amazing. A lot of people out here don't know what they are yet. Yeah. It's kind of a Midwest thing, but a lot of people love them. 
And then I talked about this before on the show. Gator balls, the gator are, balls. My, are my way to go every single time. You can't beat them. And you got to try them, folks. You would never think that this combination of stuff. And what what exactly? Build it out. So there is no gator. What what it is, it's <laughs> uh, it's just the name of the food. But it, what it is, it's like a piece of chicken with pepper jack cheese, a jalapeno. Then it's wrapped in bacon and deep fried. And so when you cut them open, the cheese just oozes out. And it is amazing. It's hard to go wrong with bacon. And then you can dip our homemade ranch in it. And our ranch, I can't even find ranch in the store that I'll even eat. I always have to get the ranch at Brothers because it is so amazing. Yep. All the sauces here are just outstanding. They're prepared daily and uh, they're, they're proprietary uh, blends and recipes that you really have to try to experience. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, we want to thank you very much for tuning in to the Dr. Jimbo Love Show with Seth Matthew. Um, come back next week. We're going to talk a little bit more college football. We'll see how Seth and I did in our picks. We didn't do too bad last week, yeah, did we? Yeah, only like one. I got one more wrong than you in NFL and we were pretty spot on or and one more wrong with you in NCAA but we were pretty spot on yes. in everything yeah and we did a little side bet five bucks uh, on two different teams uh, OSU I ended up winning that one and then Seth of course won the Georgia game because they covered the points mm -hmm. so well thank you again and we will look for you next week again look for us on YouTube and Spotify under the Dr. Jimbo Love show remote okay uh, the Dr. Jimbo Love name if you've been noticing is under Rick Rodriguez, which was my old sound guy, he has a totally different program, and uh, just please forgive that, and just make sure you type in the remote portion at the very end, and you'll get to where you'll be able to see Seth and I. Thanks you very much, and we'll see you next week, and uh, see you guys. Yep.